And I'd like to talk to you today about one of my uh, most powerful tools that I like to use called the Analytic Hierarchy Process, or AHP. This is a method to prioritize anything. Now we do lots of things in our daily work. We have far more projects, far more responsibilities than we have time for, and we always are forced to prioritize. But on what basis do we do this? Most of us are forced to guess, sometimes apply a few numbers here or there, and hope that it works out. Uh, we have a, a, actually a better process for doing this now that takes advantage of some of the special things that humans can do uh, very, very well. And I'd like to talk about that with a little bit of detail. The AHP was developed by uh, Dr. Thomas Soddy uh, in the 1960s and continues to uh, uh, evolve and grow as a methodology as a way of human decision making, it, particularly in multi-criteria uh, type problems where there are many uh, ways in which we can assess what to do and then there are many alternatives to apply that assessment in order to synthesize is the word we like to use, the optimal solution or a series of solutions. This can be applied in such uh, areas of our business worlds uh, uh, as uh, strategic planning. It can be applied for project selection. It can be applied for customer uh, selection. It can be used to prioritize customer needs, which we do in the QFD methodology all the time. It can be used to prioritize uh, technologies uh, if we're doing innovation and we have uh, several solutions that we want to uh, identify which is the strongest. It can be used to uh, prioritize vendors, suppliers, uh, plant locations, equipment uh, choices, and uh, a whole host of other things. Uh, I won't talk about this now, but it can also be applied in personal decisions that we might make, things like uh, buying a new home, buying a car, uh, where to send our kids to college, and things like that. Uh, also can take advantage of this methodology. So how does it work? Well, the basics of the uh, AHP method are that uh, we want to take a subjective problem, and that's often the types of things we face, and uh, which project should I do, how do I identify which the important characteristics are, often have very subjective uh, type of evaluations. And we want to create from that very precise, or precise as possible, discrete uh, numerical quantification of these priorities that we can be confident, uh, that we feel are reliable for which to then spend, let's say, a, a million dollar or a billion dollar budget. Now to do this, uh, we have as our input very subjective type of information. Um, and this subjective information has to be uh, prioritized in some way. Turns out one of the best ways people make judgments is that they compare two things at a time. Dr. Sadi uh, once told me a story of watching his grandmother shopping for fruit and she would pick up two cantaloupes and say, well this one's just a little bit heavier than this one. Or uh, take a whiff, oh this one is much sweeter smelling than that one. And it turns out people actually make very good decisions in what's called paired comparison, pairwise comparison, two things at a time. And uh, they need to be somewhat similar in level. So if I was trying to compare uh, one melon to another, that's pretty, pretty easy to do. But what if I were trying to compare uh, a grape to a watermelon? They're so different in dimension and in size, then the comparison becomes more difficult. So part of getting this model of uh, criteria built is making sure we have uh, similar levels of items to compare. It's very important to do that. The second thing that we want to do with this paired comparison is convert this into a numerical score. And Dr. Sadi tested many different ways of quantifying these qualitative judgments. And he uh, landed on using what he calls an eigenvector calculation. So we have paired comparisons. They're formed into a matrix. The matrix is raised to infinite powers. And we calculate an eigenvector that gives us the relative priorities of the items that we're comparing. Uh, one of the uh, advantages of these relative priorities is that they are in ratio scale. And ratio scale is very important if we want to perform 
later mathematical calculations. Uh, very commonly people use ordinal scale numbers, one, two, three, four, five. The problem is, is that the equality of ratio between one and two is different than between two and three, is different than between three and four, and four and five. When we convert these into the ratio scale numbers, then the ratios are all equal, and this preserves the mathematical precision of the priorities we are calculating. Uh, so there's your first introduction to the AHP methodology. It's very powerful. It's actually very user-friendly, and it's something I encourage anyone in the quality field to, to use in their decision-making processes.